Hello everyone, Colin Kanat here for Woodwork Web, and today is my final video for 2016. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of a break from doing videos. I'll still be working in the workshop, and I've got lots of great things lined up for next year, so you'll make sure you want to stay tuned for that too. But here's what I have in line for today. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the forums on Woodwork Web and how you can participate in them. The second thing I want to talk about is how you can find information and videos on Woodwork Web. And the third thing, at the end of the video, I've got a tip on how to put wood screws into wood so it doesn't crack. For those of you who are maybe a little bit new to Woodwork Web, we have something on the website called Forums. And it's basically a place where we can sort of correspond with one another. Uh, and if you're a member of Woodwork Web, and I know thousands of you are, I think there's something like 15 or 18,000 people who are members of Woodwork Web now, um, you can go on there, you have the ability to go on there and respond to other people's comments, and you can create your own. You know, you if you've got a question on woodworking, you can create your own little topic, look for a, a section that is best applied to it, and Put your own topic on there. You know, we have a, a bit of a holiday season coming up shortly here, uh, and people have extra time on the hands. So, you know, it's a great place in the evening to go in, snoop around, and experiment. You can't do anything wrong, because uh, we've got a great monitor, Derek uh, and myself. We both are on the forums. Uh, several times a day, we go on there and uh, respond to questions and answers, as well as other people go on there. And you know what? It's such a great place for people to learn from one another. Somebody asks a question, other people respond to it, uh, and I learn lots of stuff from the forums as well, so uh, we encourage you to uh, participate in them. Every day I get hundreds of people joining Woodwork Web and joining, uh, subscribing to my channel, and I get questions uh, every day on things, videos, and topics that I've already covered. And I try and keep up with those requests as best I can. But for those of you who I haven't been able to respond to yet, uh, the best resource that you can use is Woodwork Web. If you, on any page of Woodwork Web, wherever you are in Woodwork Web, in the sort of upper right-hand quadrant, there's a little search box. If you go there and type in one or two words of a topic that you're interested in, hit the search button, uh, it searches the entire website and it will find if there's anything to do with uh, the topic that you've looked for. It will find it any everywhere on the site and it will give you a list of all of the things that there are. Uh, and I use it myself so it's a great resource for finding information that you might be looking for and if you can't find it there you can always go to the forums and ask the question there. And you know what? It's all free. So go ahead and try that for finding more information. Now there's no real rule of thumb on when you're putting screws into wood, whether you should countersink or not. A lot of people will say if it's hardwood, you should countersink, and if it's softwood, it doesn't matter. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, yes, you often need to pre-drill hardwoods, uh, but softwoods often need to get pre-drilled as well. It really depends on the configuration of the wood. We're going to drill some, put some screws in some wood here, uh, and we'll see if that's correct or not. In woodworking, I really only use two screws. I use this one, a flat head, and you can see that it has a counter, countersunk head to it as well. Uh, and this one, the round head, and you can see that it's flat underneath. This one definitely needs countersinking. I use this screw a lot. Some people call it a, a, a wood screw, and it is a wood screw. But it is a flathead screw, and you do need to countersink them. And the reason you need to countersink them, when I understood this, it just made all the sense in the world, is because you have a wedge down here, and this wedge is wanting to split the wood. So if you don't countersink that, especially if you're close to the end of a board or in the edge of a board, it will split. And that's because it's the screw head is pushing the wood apart, but when you countersink 
for that screw before you put it in, it allows room for that screw to go in and seat itself without putting so much pressure on the wood around. So almost invariably, you could put the screw in uh, without it splitting. Today, I'm using my Robertson uh, bit in my driver and I'm using a number eight flathead wood screw. So the first screw I'm going to put in is this number eight uh, flathead and I'm not pre-drilling and I'm not countersinking and I'm just going to drill it straight into the end about a half inch from the edge. No magic there. Okay, there's the same board. This is the other end of the same board. Now I'm going to countersink it. So you can see the countersinking really does make a difference. This time I have some pine, which is a softwood. Here's the other end of the board. I'm going to countersink this one. Now the last board I have is MDF and this is not countersunk. Now I'm going to countersink the MDF. And to be honest with you, I'm not too hopeful this is going to be too much better, but we'll try it. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. Now there's the end. I just cut this off the end. This is the pine. Remember how easy this one split? And the trick that I told you I would show you is clamping. And if you don't have a countersink handy, if you clamp this, watch how, watch this. Now remember, we're not countersunk here. Now watch when we take the clamp off. It stays and that's because we've compressed the wood once in a while these will split after but not very often if they don't split when you take the clamp off it you should be good so that's a little trick if you're uh, in a position where you need to use one of these flathead screws and you don't have a countersink make sure that you clamp it and I actually use the clamp almost every time even when I countersink it because even after countersinking they can still split. Well that concludes my video and that gives you a little bit of an idea what to expect when you do countersink and when you don't countersink in both hardwoods and softwoods uh, and also the little trick about using the clamp and I do that on almost everything that I do. Well, and that, uh, as I say, that concludes my video. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching my videos all year, for all of your comments, uh, all of your suggestions. I, I read everything. I may not get a chance to comment every to every person on every comment, uh, but I do get a chance to read them all quickly and go through them. So um, next year, we're going to we got a full lineup of things coming next year. So uh, stay tuned and uh, Merry Christmas and season's greetings. Uh, Happy New Year. And uh, we'll see you in 2017. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Keep on watching.